praise the Lord. You may be seated this morning. It is a great day to serve the Lord. Amen? God has blessed us with a beautiful day to serve him. And thank God that it's not cold and snowy. Amen? Amen. So praise God for that. Pray for those that are gone on a four-day weekend. They're out and about. That God will bring them back safe and sound at the appointed time. Amen? Thank God for four-day weekends. I was talking to Brother Jack about it before service. Jack, that's Jack right there. Wait a minute, Jack. All right. He retired from the military in 1979. That's a long time ago for some of you folks. I don't think it's too far ago. But anyhow, and the, um, he was talking about back in the day, they didn't have all these 40 weekends. You guys get a lot of days off. A lot of days off. I mean, for like obscure holidays sometimes too. Why do we get four days off? And, and I told him, I said, but you remember payday activities. And you young folks don't know what payday activities are. They used to give us the brawn nose. They used to give us the uh, first, of the, first of the month off on payday so we could take, we didn't have internet, we didn't have all these things. You had to go cash your check sometimes. And um, Jack may remember, Ron may remember the time we used to get paid in cash. Yeah. We had to report to the pay officer, you know, Private candy reporting, blah, 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 and they give you your money in cash. But then again, it was not as much cash as what you get now, right? That big pay that you got, right, Jack, when you were a young man, when you were private, all $37, whatever that was. Amen. So, um, pay, you know, pay the activities and give you the day off. So, you know what? Enjoy your time. Enjoy your time off. And so since you don't have to work tomorrow, that means that you can come to church tonight at 6.30. Amen? Uh-oh. You can't use the excuse that you got to get up early and do PT and all this sort of stuff to come to the house of God. Amen? But how do we know Jesus today? Amen. This time the brethren are going to come to help us receive our Sunday morning tithe and our Sunday morning worship offering. You give as unto the Lord and God will bless you as you give to him. We can give online. Now normally uh, we've been having some real problems with, with the... Uh, the screens and the different things. So we pray that we're going to try to resolve these issues. But you can give online if you wish to. If you wish to give online, you can go to our website at myntcc.org slash Junction City KS. And there's an online giving button there on our website. Or you can give on Cash App. Cash App would be dollar sign NTCC Junction City. All right, NTCC Junction City. Or you can just pay your tithe and your offerings with in the cash and the offering bags. There's tithe envelopes in the pews. If you don't remember how to give online and wish to give online, talk to one of these ushers and tell you how to do it or talk to us after service because it's not on the screen. It's dollar sign NTCC Junction City for Cash App. Very easy. And then or our website at myntcc.org slash Junction City KS. Now, God commands us to pay our tithe. Amen? Amen. All right. And so, uh, and God will bless us if we pay our tithe, correct? Yeah. But now, we, if you want to, now how many want to read something great, right? Yeah. But it means you have to sow something. Tithe, you don't sow tithe, because that's commanded by the Lord. He said, bring your tithes and offerings. Offerings is what we give to God above and beyond. These, how we, we sow these good seeds. So if you sow sparingly, you are going to reap sparingly. But you want now think about it when you go to the restaurant, you, you buy your food, you get the bill, correct? Right. You owe that, that belongs to them. But then you give the waitress or the waiter a tip because of exceptional service, right? Yeah. Because you receive something good. And so the same thing in God, we give to God the tithe belongs to the Lord already. Amen. And then if we want to sow something good, we want to reap something good, we need to sow something good. Amen. And sometimes people give more to waitresses and waiters than they do to God. Right. But I think we got something far better than the Lord. Amen? Amen. And the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Amen? So let's receive a good offering. The offering goes to meet the needs of the work of the Lord here. The lights will build on and on and on. You give to Jesus and Jesus will bless you. Amen? Amen. Brother Jim, so would you please pray and ask God to bless the gift and the giver. It's truly a blessing, Lord, to be in your house. On this beautiful morning, Lord. Please bless the gift and the giver as we give in your name, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen.
bless you for it abundantly. Amen? Amen. God is good to us. Amen? I know the words are not going to be on the screen, but if you know the words, sing it with them. Amen? Let's help them out. Since so many people are missing today, let's sing it under the Lord. Amen? It's good to see Elizabeth back. Amen. She was on vacation down in Louisiana for a little while. Compliments of Uncle Sam at JRTC. So welcome back, Elizabeth. We're glad to have you. Amen. God bless you. Amen.
hand upon them. Amen. I'd like to read to you this morning. Please forgive the fact that we're having technical difficulties with this stuff. So, let's do it the old-fashioned way. Amen? Amen. I'm going to read to you from Romans chapter 4, verse 20 through 21. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. One more very familiar portion of Scripture, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Yes. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Yes. And I'd like to preach to you this morning for just a little while on the title of a message, Three Do Nots for the Christian." Three do nots for the Christian. Reverend Palmer, sir, please stand up for it. Father, we thank you this morning for allowing us to be in your house, to hear, and to receive from you, O God. Continue to move and bless in the remainder of this service. Meet each and every need this morning, Lord. Help us to be attentive to your word. Be with Pastor now as he ministers unto your people. And we'll give you the praise and the glory. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Let me begin by saying it's good to be in the house of the Lord. In the psalmist writing, he said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Yes. And again, I'm going to say, God has blessed us with a beautiful, wonderful day to serve him and to be here in his house. But that being said, again, I was talking to Jack right before service. We are living in some crazy times. Can someone echo that amen to that? Amen. We know that our stock market's messed up. The economy's messed up. The moral fabric of our society is messed up. Crime is out of control, but you know what? There's one thing that's not messed up. There's one thing that's not out of control, and that is Jesus Christ, the Son of Almighty God. I understand things are crazy, but you know what? God's not crazy, God. Amen to that. And I don't have any sad stories to tell this morning, but when a man or a woman, they come to the place of being born again, of accepting Jesus as their Savior, coming in talk, contact with God, realizing, God, I need you in my life. God, I need a touch in my heart. I need a touch in my soul. I want you to know that we can be encouraged because we know, praise God, that we are on our way to heaven. 
Now you know, one of these days, this thing's going to be wrapped up. Yes, sir. And Jesus is coming to take us home to be with him forevermore. And I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to that day when we all get to heaven, all right? And I understand things might be kind of crazy down here, but you know what? When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we are right with God, that means that when our, when our relationship with him is correct. And as you already know that I don't preach church membership, I don't preach religion, I preach a reality and a relationship with God. Amen. And when we know that our relationship with God is correct and we're right with God, we're on good talking terms with the Lord, I'm glad that each and every day that we can live secure in our salvation. God has saved us and God has saved us for the duration and one of these days, like I already said, he's coming again, but I'm glad that even though everything might be messed up round about us, uh, that God is on the move and God wants to do something and we can live secure in our salvation. And I really want you to know, God, I believe that God wants to do something. Amen. We read about the revival that's taking place at Asbury College and I pray that that just kind of spreads abroad, Amen. Amen. And there's other places that I, and I, I like, our, we have a church in Aurora, Colorado. Yes. And they put a sign up outside their church, and they, I forget exactly how it was, but it's revival prayer tonight at 8 o'clock. You know, why can't it happen here as well? And you know what, I believe that it can't just happen in Asbury, and just not in Colorado. I believe we can have revival in Kansas. I believe that God can do something in Washington. I believe that God can do something worldwide that when we, as the people of God, say, wait a minute, I'm going to live for God. I'm going to do what God wants me to do. And we can just sit back and behold the glory of the Lord. Amen. Let me tell you something. We can live secure in our salvation. Yes. But let me tell you something else. Do not allow the enemy of your soul to take away the confidence that you have in God. Amen. Now we know from the Bible that he said, the Bible says that the devil is going about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Yes. And I want you to know he is on the prowl. He's out to destroy us. And, and he wants to take away your confidence. He wants to take away the hope that you have in God. And so I'm telling you right now, we can resist the devil. Amen? Yes. The Bible talks about that if we resist the devil, that the devil has to flee. Amen. All right, now, the problem sometimes is that we don't resist. Right. Come on now, don't look at me all cra kind of crazy. <laughs> sometimes we don't resist, do we? Right. But the Bible says the Word of God is still powerful, correct? Yeah. That if we resist the devil, he has to flee. And so now it's time to do what? To lift up our eyes and lift up our heads because God is still God. And I really, this is what we need to realize and understand that God is still God, correct? The one who created the heavens and the earth, the one who created man out of the dust of the earth, God is still in control even when we do not understand what's going on around about us, correct? So what am I saying? Be encouraged. God is still God. The devil is a liar, but God is still God. Society might be out of control, but God is still God. Now listen to me, this is not a time of discouragement, but rather it is a time to be encouraged. Let me tell you, God loves you. Amen. And God sent his son for you. And God sent his son for me that we might be saved, that we might be delivered, that we might be restored. And the Bible said that he came to heal the brokenhearted. And there's a lot of people in the world today that have broken hearts and broken lives. And, and their dreams have been crushed upon the rocks of despair. And they don't know which way to turn. God made a remedy. There is a remedy. And his name is Jesus Christ. And this is where we want men and women to fall in love with God. And to experience the goodness of God. Preacher, can God put my life back together again? I'm going to tell you the resounding yes, God can put your life back together again. And this is what God wants us to do as his people, as his children, to rise up and claim what is rightfully ours. Guess what? We are children of the king. He is our Lord, the Lord of lords, and the king of kings, and we need to claim what is ours in God. We don't have time to give in lies. Of the enemy. Yeah. The Bible said that he's a liar and the father of lies. Yeah. Talking about the devil. So what is the exhortation? The first do not. Do not stagger at the promises of God. Alright, I read to you there in the book of Romans, he staggered not at the promise of God for unbelief. But was strong in faith, 
Giving glory to God. You know what? We need to be strong in the faith, giving glory to God. Amen. I understand there are things that attack our faith. Am I right? Yes, things come our way, and we're bombarded, and, and our faith is under attack. But wait, wait a minute. The same God that saved you is the same God that can help you. We need to be strong in faith, doing what? Glorifying God. Yes. And then he goes on, and being fully persuaded that what he has promised, he was able also to perform. So here, what's going on is that in these verses of Scripture, Abraham is talking about Abraham. He did not stagger at the precious promises of Almighty God. His faith was strong. He gave glory to God. And I like where it said that he was fully persuaded. I want you to know this morning that each and every one of us that are here this morning, that we need to stand upon the promises of Almighty God. We need to be fully persuaded. Amen. Now, let me really, let's, let's break this down for just a moment. Are we really fully persuaded? Now, we have to come to the place where we believe the Bible. Yes. Yes. Uh, now, it's easy to sit in Sunday morning church and say, yes, preacher, I, I believe the Bible. But are we fully persuaded that God's able to do what he said? Come on now. It's easy to say when you got money in your pocket. That's right. It's easy to say when your car's working all right. It's easy to say when you have a 40 day weekend. <laughs> but what about on Tuesday morning when you have to go back to work? What about when the car breaks down and, and someone says, well, preacher, all things work together for the good <laughs> to them that love God. We believe that, right? Yes, Until we're in a battle. Yes, sir. And someone comes along and says, well, wait, wait a minute, all things work together for the good. You're taking that out of context. No. It's for us. And when things are going good and we rejoice in the word of God, we rejoice in the promises of God, these are the same things that we need to do when things are not going so well. Amen? We have to be persuaded. Are you persuaded this morning that the word of God is true? It's time, listen, to really believe God. And I think that's where the rub is. Sometimes we don't believe God. Are you still with me this morning? Sometimes we don't believe, do we? So we believe God. We take him at his promises. And as we do this, I'm going to tell you that God is an on-time God. Amen. That means as we see God move, as we see God bless, as we see God move in a miraculous way, it will increase our faith in God. I'm telling you right now, our faith needs to be increased in God. And God is able, absolutely able to perform that which he has promised us. You know what? Thank God for forgiveness. Amen. Maybe you're here in this service today. You need forgiveness. Maybe, maybe you have, I don't, want, I don't need to know what it is. Maybe you've been doing some things that you ought not be doing. I don't want to know. Unless you really want to tell me. But what you need to do is you need to get down on your knees and you need to talk to God about it. Yes. And whatever that it is, I'm here today. I really believe it's God's love and it's God's mercy stretching out to us right now. And God says, I can forgive you. I can make you whole. The world may say you're unforgivable. The world may say that there's no hope for you. The world may say that, that you're just going to die lost and go to hell. But let me tell you something this morning. Our God is able to forgive. Our God is able to make whole. Our God specializes in a God of being a God of restoration. Can God, God can. Pastor, I, I need a healing in my body. I believe that God is greater. He is the great physician. God can touch our body. He can touch our mind. He can make us whole. But we have to believe God. I am persuaded that God can take a rock gut sinner and save them and clean them up. And the Bible said the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from what? All sin. How do you know, preacher? Because I know what God did for me. I know as a personal testimony that God reached down in the muck and the mire of this world. And if he saved me, bless your heart, he can save you. If he can forgive me, he can forgive you. Well, preacher, you're just saying that because you're a preacher. No. It's a personal testimony. I know what my God did for me. I know how that I lived in the world and how that God delivered me from the vices of this world. And God is still God because the Bible said that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And bless your heart, if God did it for me, he can do it for you. It's time to be restored. God can do it. Say, so, well, 
I don't think he can do it for me, preacher. Have you tried? I tried living for God, preacher, one time for about a month. That's not long enough. <laughs> yes, sir. I know what God's done for me. And you can say what you want to say, and you can believe what you want to believe. But I know. Yes, sir. I know. How was in the love of Bravo? Standing on the hillside out there in Hawaii. And this man was telling me, he said, if you died right now, where would you go? I said, I'm dying to go to hell. Leave me alone. Thank God that God didn't leave me alone. I'm serious. And I, I stood there and I told him, I said, listen. I said, I believe there's a God. I said, I believe in Jesus. That there was a Jesus. I believe that Jesus died upon a cross. I said, I believe that he died and rose again on the third day. I said, but I don't want to be a Christian. You're going to ask me to come be a Christian. That means I got to go to church and I got to read my Bible and I got to do all that. I said, I don't want to do that. Just leave me alone. And he said, if you died, where would you go? I said, I'd die and go to hell. And you know what? Thank God that he didn't give up on me. Thank God that God didn't give up on me. And every while I was kept running into these people telling me about God. And then God began to deal with my heart. And I realized I needed a touch from God. I needed something more than what man could give me. And I went to a church that was much like this one. And I gave my heart to Jesus. And I surrendered to the Lord. And I walked in there a sinner. I walked out a saint. And I want you to know God can do the same thing for you. And 30, almost 40 years later now, I'm standing here telling you what, that God's power has not diminished. It has not fallen off. God still has power to save and to deliver and to make you whole. God will do it. Can God? God can. We read in the book of Hebrews where God says, cast not away therefore your confidence. In spite of everything going on around about us. And really, it's mixed up. People don't even know what sex they are anymore. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I shouldn't have said that. It's not very politically correct. Oh, what? <laughs> I was talking to Jack. Jack, we've come to agreement, haven't we, this morning? Mm -hmm. He said something like God, God made him a little boy. You know what you said? We know the difference. I don't know, maybe I should not even say those things, but it's still the truth. Amen. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. In spite of all that's happening, we can have confidence in God. Amen. Well, I got sick, or this happened. Where's God? Well, you know what? Things happen in life, and they get sick. You know, God can help you through the sickness. Yes, well, how do you know, preacher? Been there, done that. Yes. Amen. Some of you know the deal on that. And so even last year, but God saw me through it all. Amen? Yeah. See, I'm telling you what, God is God. God is still a healer. Yeah. And there's a lot. Why'd you get sick in the first place then? I don't know. Maybe you should bring glory to God. Amen? Yeah. God knows. Our spiritual victory depends upon our faith. Our spiritual victory. I'm glad that God gives us physical victory and he gives us a spiritual victory. Think about it. Think about Peter. In the Bible. Peter walked in the water. He said, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come out there. He stepped over the side of that ship and began to walk in the water. And he began to walk in that water as long as he looked to Jesus and he had faith in him. But he began to sink as soon as he lost his faith and was filled with fear. He started looking at the waves and, and all the effects of the storm. And he got his eyes off the Lord and he began to sink. In our own life, we can walk in victory as long as we are firm in our faith with Jesus Christ and God's goodness and faithfulness. There are going to be things that will try to cause you to get your eyes off the Lord. But the Bible tells us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. I'm telling you right now, we need to keep our eyes on Jesus. Amen? And so as soon as you get your eyes, can we testify to this? As soon as we get our eyes off of Jesus, we begin to get all kind of crazy thinking. We begin to do crazy things. Why? Because we're not looking in the right direction. That's why we need to pray. We need to read our Bibles. We need to be around other believers. Iron sharpens iron. As we look unto the Lord together, and we look to Jesus and encourage one another. 
pray for one another, help one another, and be a part as we connect with you, we'll connect with the Lord, and together we can go to heaven. Can someone say amen? amen. We will sink in our problems. We will sink in our difficulties. If we lose our faith, we we'll begin to doubt and fear. That's one of the biggest tools, I think, of the enemy is the Christians. You may not do some things, you may not be guilty of the works of the flesh, that we read about in Galatians, but in our minds, we begin to doubt. We begin to fear. We begin to overthink things. And next thing you know, it's like this hamster wheel rolling in your brain. Amen? Then, we lose our faith. Then you want to quit. But let me tell you, the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7, for God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I want you to know this is a thinking a spirit that we have from God. And we have to allow this to be real. So when these, these thoughts come and, and these doubts come, uh, we, can, we can go to the book of Ephesians and read about the whole armor of God and we can put on the armor of God to fight against these things and realizing, God, this is not of you. Uh, these things that are coming in my mind uh, do not coincide with your divine holy word. I cast these things down. Uh, I'm bringing these thoughts into captivity. I'm not going to think this way. And the Bible said, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And church, that's exactly what we need to do. And then we can have spiritual victory, and those doubts begin to vanish, and those fears begin to diminish. Why? Because we have the right kind of spirit on the inside. Stand with confidence. Stand with confidence on the mighty promises of God. And let your faith grow. So the exhortation is, keep your eyes on Jesus. Amen? Yeah. All right, so number one, do not stagger. Remember the three do nots for a Christian. You say, praise God, we're almost halfway done. <laughs> okay, the 14 do nots of a Christian. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Number one, do not stagger at his promises. Number two, do not be weary in doing good. Yeah. I read to you, and let not, and let us not be weary in well doing, for in due season we will reap if we faint not. Galatians six and nine. All right, so we're told here: don't become weary, don't get tired of doing good, for in due season your reward's going to come your way. Amen. Now we don't do what we do for God for a reward, correct? Yes, sir. That's the wrong motive. We do it because we love God. Amen. Why do we come to his house? Why do we pray? Why do we read the Bible? Why do we do the things of God and do his work? Because we love him. Amen. Thank God he first loved us. Amen. When we were unlovable. Amen. When we, I have to say when we were, or maybe I should say when we are hard-headed. Yes, no, so I'm not saying when you are hard-headed. It's just when we are. I'm putting myself right in that window, right? Yes. When we're hard-headed. Just supposing when you're rebellious. God, thank you for all these perfect people here in church today. None of you would ever be rebellious. None of, none of you would ever be hard-headed. Hmm? Elizabeth, are you ever hard-headed? Uh, not my wife here. <laughs> so just plead the fifth, right? There you go. I hope you are. We all are, aren't we? But that's all right, because God can take that hard-headedness and turn it in the right direction. Amen? Amen? Sometimes difficulties and trials. You're not allowed to lie outside of church either, just so you know. <laughs> I just thought about that. It's amazing I could read this outline and preach it and think about that. I'm not allowed to lie in church. Okay. And I thought, well, you're not allowed to lie outside of church either. It's just saying, all right, so I'm not, according to my Bible anyway, right? Preacher, don't talk about the Bible. Don't talk about where all liars shall have their place on lake of fire. What? Yeah, it's really in there. Yes, sir. Revelation 20, 21 and 8, after the seventh come, all right? Please want to know. Anyway, sometimes difficulties and trials, so don't lie, Elizabeth, all right? So 
in church or out of church. I'm not saying she does, I'm just saying. Thank you for that illustration. Sometimes difficulties and trials make us feel like quitting. Yes, sir. It's hard, right? We feel it's not worth suffering so much. We feel like, well, I haven't gotten the results that I expected. I'm going to stop doing the good work that I'm doing. It's just not worth it. I'm tired. It goes back to that, that wheel running around in your brain. You're thinking the wrong things. But God is saying, don't stop. Do not stop doing the good work that you're doing. Uh, God knows what's going on. Amen. Amen. In the book of Acts, we read about a man by the name of Cornelius. He kept on praying. He kept on doing good, even though he did not know the true God. So God rewarded him and revealed the truth to him. Thank God that God still reveals the truth to men and women. Correct? Amen. We read about a man by the name of Daniel. Daniel kept on praying until the answer came. He did not stop praying even when the devil was fighting against him. You know what? I thought about that. The devil has not become weary in doing evil. Right. So that means that we as God's people, his children, should not become weary in doing good. Stay in the battle. Stay in the fight. Get up. Pick up your shield. Put on your helmet. Pick up your sword. Put on the whole armor of God. Put that breastplate on. Shod your feet in the right way. And you know what? Let's get up and let's go on for God. We can do this for the glory of Jesus. Amen. Keep on doing good. God loves you. Yes. I'm going to tell you right now, God loves you. Amen. God will bless you. Do not quit. You can make it. You know, the best thing about it is we're not alone. Yeah. We don't have to fight it alone. Amen? Yeah. We're not, <coughs> excuse me, in the battle by ourselves. I'm glad that God is there with us. I'm glad that he walks with us. I'm glad that even when things are dark, he's there with us. I have brothers and sisters that are praying for me. I have the family of God that's upholding me in prayer. I look around, wait a minute, I'm not alone. I've got a brother over here. I've got a sister over here. I have a pastor praying for me. I have the people of God, the family of God saying, come on, you can do it. I got a message this morning from Reverend Teeman, our overseer. He said, pray for you something that effect uh, that, and that you'll have a good service. Uh, you know what? There are people that are concerned. Uh, Pastor Olson prays for us. Uh, we are not in this alone, but most of all, we have an advocate before the Father by the name of Jesus. Uh, he's there making intercession for us. Uh, we are not alone. Uh, all the Son of God is praying for us. Hallelujah. Pastor, I do all these things and nobody even notices. Bible said in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which ye have shown toward his name, in that ye have ministered to the saints and do minister. You know what? I may not know. Others may not know. But there is a God in heaven that knows, uh, that loves you. He's keeping a record. Uh, he knows what you're doing for him. Uh, he knows the labors that you do for him. Uh, and guess what? It does not go, go unnoticed. Uh, God will bless us. Amen. Do not stagger at his promises. Do not be weary in well-doing. And number three, the third, do not. Do not feel forgotten and weak. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Isaiah 40, 27 to 31. And then also I like this Psalm 115, verse 12. The Lord hath been mindful of us, and he will bless us. And he will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. You know what? When you are a child of God, when you get saved, you give your life to God, you realize you're a sinner, you ask him into your heart. He is always mindful of you. And he'll never forsake you. Amen. I told you how I gave my life to God just about 40, nearly 40 years in October when I gave my life to the Lord. And, which is pretty good since I'm only 28. Right? Right, Douglas? Yes, sir. Thank you. What was that? 
God. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So, but anybody believes that I'm 28. Hmm, Elizabeth, just pray for me, right? Pray my strength in the Lord. So I have this same prayer. You, have, you pray for me that I get right with God, and I'll pray for y'all that y'all get right with God. And those of you without sin cast the first stone. I don't hear no stones. Right? But that was good. I had to give you kudos on that one. <sighs> Praise the Lord. So anyway, I got saved five minutes ago, and God's been good to me, all right? <laughs> you give your life to God, God blesses us, and God helps us. Why can't we have a good time in the house of the Lord? The Bible says a merry heart feels good like a medicine. And that was pretty good. Kudos to Elizabeth right now. He said that he will never leave us nor forsake us in Hebrews chapter 13. We give our life to God. We get right with Jesus. He'll never forsake us. We're not walking alone. Amen? Amen. What a promise we have from God. It goes back to the beginning where we we're fully persuaded that God's able to keep that. How many believe that God goes with us? Amen. All right, so we have a bunch of folks right now over there deployed in 2nd Brigade. God goes with them. Yeah. Elizabeth came. And then she came a little while ago. And then she went, right after she started coming, she went to Europe. She deployed. Iraq, and she, Iraq whatever, went over there. <laughs> far from here. Yeah. And then she came back, and she's back, and then she went to Europe to see. But the point that I want to make, even though she went to all these places, God went with her. Yeah. God is not limited to Junction City. Hallelujah. He said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And you have to realize that. And it has to become real to you that even though you're in the middle of darkness, you're in the middle of a battle, things are going wrong in your life, we are not alone. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he promises us strength when we're weak and weary. But you know what? In our feeble mind, sometimes we feel that we are forgotten and forsaken. You can be around a bunch of people but feel ever so alone. I'm by myself. Especially when difficulties are prolonged and our strength grows weak. But it is precisely in these moments that we must believe in God's faithfulness. Amen? The same God that saved you, the same God that forgave you, the same God that healed you, the same God that has blessed you, He is still God. We are not alone. We are his children. I love this in Lamentations, and this probably has to be one of my favorite. As you're, I'm sure, so many times. Lamentations 3:22. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Praise the Lord. Oh, we can be consumed by sin and consumed by the world. Oh, but because of the love and the compassion and the mercy of Jesus, we are not consumed. And I like that every morning that I wake up, they're new every morning. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness that you've shown to me one more day. Don't be so loud, but you know I'm excited about that. Yes. That means every day I wake up, they're new. And God's faithfulness is renewed every day, every step that I know. Though I may feel forgotten, though I feel like I'm alone, I'm not alone because I know that my God, my Savior, walked with me every step of the way. In our lives, in our battles that we face, we don't have to panic. Sometimes we are... We have the propensity to panic. All we have to do is to wait upon God. And he'll renew our strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Sometimes we are people that are most impatient. We don't like to wait. Jesus is the answer. 
We need to learn to wait upon the Lord. Waiting patiently. And as we trust in God, I want you to know that God knows what's going on. God knows what's going on in your mind, in your heart, in your life right now. I do not think that it is an accident that you're here in the house of the Lord. I don't think that it's just by some chance. But I believe that God has everything in control. So whatever we're facing right now in our life, we can turn to the Lord. We can look to him. Three do nots. Do not stagger at the promise of God. Do not be weary in well-doing. Do not feel forgotten and weak. And together, as a body of believers, together as a church, we can wait upon the Lord and he can renew our strength. As you bow your heads, please, and close your eyes, reverence.